Hey everybody, it's me, Kayvon. For those of you who don't know me, I am by far the most famous half-Persian comedian in the world. And if you don't believe I'm half-Persian, then why am I wearing this deep-cut v-neck? But for more serious things, I thought today we would take a turn from my normal comedy to talk about something that's going on in the world. Politics. Everybody's talking about Iran right now, and I figured I should help give some insight to those of you who are trying to make ends meet and figure out what is going on because the news will tell you a thousand different things and you have to sift through it. So let me give you a little bit of a background. My family was part of Iran before 1979. That's why they call themselves Persians. Persians love America. They love what's going on around the world. They love freedom and they saw their country disappear when the Islamic regime took over they took the women who would wear mini skirts and colored outfits. They all looked like Kennedys. They would sit on the top of a Corvette and they would go dancing and party. And they loved freedom. Iran was one of the first places that had Cyrus the Great who offered the cylinder that proclaimed freedom to all religions and cultures. It was a human rights breakthrough. Fast forward to 1979, my family gets kicked out of Iran uh, the reason they're not there today is because we would be murdered if we tried to go back. There's people in my family, and I'm probably one of them, who doesn't dare go back because the risk of disappearing is too great. So when you see the media defending Soleimani and the regime and we should just stay out of it, we stayed out of it when Carter was president, and because of that, 80 million people lost their freedom, and they haven't had it since. So those of you who are saying, hey, America sucks, this country is the cause of everyone's problems, just know that no one's going to just give freedom back to all those people. And you're coming from a place of privilege as you're criticizing the United States government, because there's people in Iran that are not able, they don't have that same freedom, they don't make fun of their president every day. They don't make fun of their leaders. Uh, you know, I'm talking to you, Ilhan Omar from Minnesota. They don't criticize left and right, so you never hear that point of view, and you think, wow, the United States government is horrible, and we need to leave everyone else alone. People that are speaking out are the voice of the Iranian people who are covered from head to toe. They don't wear beautiful, colorful outfits and go dancing together. They don't celebrate and party the way you do. So while you're tweeting from the comfort of your home, enjoy your privilege that you get to criticize, but maybe think, hmm, instead of complaining all day about this little uh, flesh wound, I hate the president, I hate the president, over here people have cancer. And why don't you use your energy right now? The bigger threat is cancer. So I, I'm sorry I'm a comedian, I shouldn't be talking too politically, but it, it hits home. It hits home when they tell you that your family will be murdered if they go back. Um, what we saw is the students, people our age, they see Americans and Canadians tweeting and Instagramming and having fun. Freedom of speech, freedom of internet. Our generation is stuck under towels and blankets and sheets. And if that's your choice and you want to wear that, so be it. But in Iran, understand, it is not a choice. They are compelled under penalty of jail, public execution, disappearing. So don't tell me, oh, leave it alone, that's just how they are. If they choose, in America, if you wear those outfits, maybe it's pressure from your family and so forth. But there, it's cover it up or there's big problems, big penalties. So if you're a feminist in America, you better keep that in mind when you're defending the regime. If you're a leftist who wants freedom for everybody and, oh, anything should go, whatever anyone wants to do, they're born that way, this and that, then Iran should be the first thing you're defending before you criticize your neighbor in Arkansas or Alabama who probably really doesn't care what you're doing, okay? You call it the flyover states and the ignorant racist people that you've never met. What if they don't care what you're doing? What if they're just libertarian on the idea? It's not for them. Keep it in your side of the fence. They'll have their own. Everybody lives on. That's what America is right now. And there is a bigger problem that you guys are missing the ball on. You are not focusing on the people who are not allowed to speak. You saw a million people who were 
praying and crying over a casket of a war criminal, a terrorist, the regime would always promote to kids death to America, death to Israel, death to... And then when you call them on it, they go, we don't mean when we say death to America, we don't mean death to America. What we are saying is just death to the Donald Trump. You see? So there we go. Like, that is not an excuse. That doesn't cut it for me. You want to say death to my president of my country? Make no mistake, they're not just saying death to Trump. Somebody taught them that, some PR person, some person in Washington, D.C. who does free legal work for the regime. They taught them when they put the camera, say, we don't mean when we say death to America, death to America. We just mean death to Donald Trump. They mean death to you. And the first person they're going to kill is a leftist if they were to take over. It's a feminist. It's a LGBTQRSTUVWXY and Z. It's you. So don't fall for it. Take them at their word. When they say death to America, there are people in Iran that feel that way. When they say death to Israel, they want to wipe Israel off the map if they can. But that is not everyone in Iran. The silent people who are not allowed to speak up, the ones who will not dare put their face on a camera, they are in their homes hoping we will speak up on their behalf. It's 2020. The students have risen up. People have died. We had a situation where Iran wanted to save face because we took out their general. They had to shoot some rockets. They missed on purpose, right? But in their crazed sign of power, someone got jumpy and shot an airline, a commercial airline, out of the sky. In that plane were somewhere above 170 innocent people. The evidence indicates that the plane was shot down by an Iranian surface-to-air missile. Iran vehemently denies the theory that an Iranian missile brought down the plane. The thing that is clear to us, and that we can say with certainty, is that this plane was not hit by a missile. So in this, basically, a show of power, somebody made a mistake. They killed over 170 innocent people on a Ukrainian airline full of Canadians, from what I understand, Europeans, Americans. But more than that, they just killed humans. We call that, in sports, we call that an own goal. That means this was an unforced error, a completely senseless one that did not need to happen. Trump is so in their head. They're tripping over themselves. They're, they're doing an own goal where you kicked your own ball into your own goal because you were so busy worried about the enemy so much instead of worrying about the people. And this is the big disagreement people had with Obama. Everyone wants to bring up race. Oh, he's because he's black. America voted for Obama twice because he was black. We wanted to wipe our hands clean of this racism. We wanted to move forward. We want to show that that doesn't matter. It's about ideas now. We want good ideas. So, Barack had bad ideas with Iran. He had a theoretical understanding, a uh, academic Harvard understanding of what to do. Academics sometimes get so educated they lose common sense in the process. Hopefully that's not you, but it happens all the time. When you're just studying in theories and you're not a man on the street or a woman on the street, you lose your street smarts. Donald Trump studied in Pennsylvania at an Ivy League school, but he also hung out with men on the streets, tough guys, mafia guys, street walkers, you know what I'm saying? Bankers, Wall Street. He's hung in all those different circles. So he can understand at several different levels at once. Whether you like Donald Trump or not, his idea was different. In 2009, there was a green movement. Obama's response to that was not support the people, make sure the regime knew they were cool, do what you got to do to make that go away. We are standing down, and America didn't get involved. Everybody applauded. Nobel Peace Prize. Huh? Well, what did peace bring? It brought death to a bunch of protesters and 10 more years of suffering. When Trump won, you saw little things start popping off because the kids, the students, the people who want freedom in Iran, they felt like they had an ally. They felt that if maybe things got bad enough, freedom could be theirs. Well, here we are. We've taken out their general. 
They've killed over 170 people on a passenger commercial plane. It's up to us to make sure that those people didn't die in vain. Persian New Year's coming up in two months. What if for the first time ever, people are that much closer to freedom because 170 people, see when those 170, they all had family, friends, they should not die in vain. They should be the reason, they should be the legacy of what forced freedom to come back to the Iranian people. There's no way you can make that what happened okay. You should be angry if you're, think about being in an airplane, just I fly every day as a comedian, think about being in a plane and your own country shoots, they're so stupid, they shoot a rocket and hit your plane. Hopefully, hopefully it was quick and instant. What if it wasn't? I picture being in a plane where half of it's falling and you're scre you're just what? You have to think about things like this. So while you're sitting in your position of privilege in the United States or Canada, wherever you are, Europe, just picture what that felt like for the newlyweds, the students, the grandparents, the soon-to-be mothers that were on there, and think, what are we going to do going forward? I don't want to hear about, well, in 1950, uh, Musavi and Mossadegh and this. We're not 1950 anymore, and we're not going back. Well, Iran and America should have never... Look, if Trump forced them to cause an own goal, that's like if you fire somebody, and he goes home and beats his wife, and says, well, if you hadn't fired me, I wouldn't have been so stressed and beat my... You're a wife beater. You are bad to your own people. That's the reason we fired you in the first place. I support the people of Iran. I want freedom for the people of Iran. That's all I want. And we might have different policy discussions, but here's what we know today. Donald Trump is the president now, most likely till 2024. Get it through your heads. For some guy that a lot of you hate so much and you think, oh, he's so horrible, how come the Democrats don't have a single candidate who can even get through a sentence without stumbling, mumbling, kissing somebody's neck, having a thruple relationship, getting kicked out of Congress or the Senate? So if he's the worst in the world and you can't beat him, what's that say about you? We have people that are now victims. But let's not forget, we have people that have been victims for 40 years. I hope you guys will support the people of Iran. Use your privilege. Don't make an own goal here in America. Don't score on yourself. Don't hate Trump so bad that you start supporting terrorists. I saw people saying, I wish it was Trump that uh, was the one who shot it down. That way we could blame the great devil America. Now, I already know all the criticisms because I've heard them all. Oh, what about when Trump said he would destroy the cultural sites in that tweet? Okay, that's a tweet. That is a form of diplomacy when you make a threat that you hope to never have to do. But don't be so emotional that you think he's coming after all the cultural sites. That is not what the intention of that threat was. That threat was a signal to the regime not to hide your missiles or hole up in any of these sites and think you're going to be safe. He was giving them a warning to let them know where he stood. We love the cultural artifacts. We, we've we seen the photos. They're beautiful. They're amazing. That was never going to happen, but the threat needed to be there. It's 2020. The people in Iran can see a light at the end of the tunnel for the first time in 40 years. I'm a stand-up comedian. I'm a free speaker. I cannot do my job in Iran, but I can do it in Canada, America, Europe, Asia, I've done it all over the world. This is one of the last places on earth that you can't. Trump has brought great, great advancement with North Korea and South Korea. I was in South Korea performing my comedy tour, and they have posters all over of crossing the DMZ and shaking hands for the first time in 50 years. How could it be you don't support a president who, love him or hate him, made that handshake possible? Where is the handshake between the United States and Iran? I see it in our future, and I'm hoping by Persian New Year 2020, enough people will join me and see potential. Let's hope for the handshake, because it's time for the people of Iran to be able to have that too. Uh, I know I'm going to lose about, mm, let's see, 40% of my fans. I have a famous saying, Iranians are so political. If you ask 10 of them their opinion, they'll give you 35 different answers on any given subject. Uh, and it's not my job to be, uh, in my comedy shows, I'm not super political. But there's a time and a place for everything, and I hope to one day go to Iran, bring laughter. I've never been to Iran because they will kill me if I go, so I don't need that criticism. You've never been there. Yeah. Would you go if they promised to kill you? We would like to meet all these beautiful people. 
I want the people in Iran, because I know you have uh, Wi-Fi and streaming, and you have VPNs, you have ways of finding this. I have so many Iranian fans that say, one day maybe you come here. I do want to come there. I want freedom for you guys. I want the religion. See, in America, we have freedom of speech because we don't have one religion that dictates everything. We can argue about it. We got a lot of, but don't believe, don't believe that America is your enemy. Don't believe Christians are your enemy. Don't believe white people are your enemy. I tour the world. There's so many comedians who only hang out in LA and in New York City. Stop listening to them. Because they don't go, they, they call the middle of the country flyover states. Oh, oh, you go to Nebraska? That's a flyover state. My family's from Nebraska, half of them. Okay? Kansas, Iowa, the Midwest. It's not a flyover state. Those are real people. They have real freedom they want for you. They love you. The real people in America who put Trump in office love you Iranians. They love the Iranian people. Don't believe the mainstream media. Because they're here to divide us right now. And we want to show a sign of unity. So coming from the most famous half-Persian comedian in the world, my name is Kayvon, and I support freedom in Iran. I hope you will too. Thank you for watching, and I hope you're motivated to also put out a video just like this and show your support. Now's the time. Do not let those people, those innocent victims, don't let their death become something that just happened in vain. The light is at the end of the tunnel.